Hello, in this video we're going to talk about project management uh, and specifically about building the network and determining the critical path. So in this case what we're doing is we're looking at precedence relationships and we're drawing that visual or graphical network go doing the paths from left to right uh, for earliest start, earliest finish time and then the paths from right to left, latest finish, latest start uh, and this is just an example of how uh, you might execute uh, uh, execute one of those if you have a question on project management. So, uh, let's get started. Just a quick review. Uh, we'll do the activity on node approach and this is a uh, project management node. You will uh, sometimes see these as squares or, or other shapes and really the specific shape doesn't matter that much. What matters is you have a task or activity name here, you have duration here, you have earliest start here, earliest finish and we do from start to finish uh, with the, the pass from left to right, earliest start, earliest finish, and then we have latest start, latest finish uh, here. So those are that's how we fill out those nodes, uh, and that's just a quick review. So let's now look at a simple project. Here we go. This is a relatively simple project. You can see here, I'm just checking, there we go, you can see we have activities, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven activities in this one, so it's a relatively simple project. We given the duration, if you're doing the project plan, you would have to estimate those durations. And then here we are given uh, the predecessors, uh, and uh, uh, which will help us in the relationship between these individual uh, activities. So let's then begin and draw this project network. I always like to uh, start with a start node. That just helps me keep clear in my mind where uh, where the activities are and how they are related to each other. Some people don't do a start and a finish node. I like to do it so I'm going to include it. So if we go back here we see A has no immediate predecessors. So we then draw out of the start node we draw a node for A I apologize if my handwriting is difficult to read. I am doing the best we can. We put the duration here and we're not going to do the earliest start, earliest finish or latest finish, latest start until we're done the entire uh, until we're done the entire network. So then we look at B which is three weeks or days or whatever units we have and its immediate predecessor is A and we have C which is 4 and again immediate predecessor is A so we would go the the arrow indicates that it, it has an immediate uh, uh, that that it is that it has a direct precedence relationship so this would be B and it is 3 and we would have C and it is 4. So that says that we start A has to be done before either B or C can start. Let's look at the next one. D is too long and it has no immediate predecessor, so we are going to do D out of the start node. D has a duration of 2, 
We'll finish these nodes off. We'll go back to our information here. E has a duration of four and it has predecessors of both C and D. So we draw an arrow from C and an arrow from D to E, which has a duration of four. And we'll just finish the boundaries of that node. F has a duration of five and it comes out of both B and E. So out of E, out of B, we draw the node F has a duration of five. And then the last one is G has a duration of 14 and uh, no immediate predecessors. So it comes out of the start node And because that is all of the uh, activities on the node, uh, on the project, we can now say definitively that anything that doesn't have an arrow coming out from it, we can put into a finish node. Again, you don't have to do a finish node. You could draw the network just like that if you choose. I like a start and finish node because it keeps things uh, relatively clear in my head. So now we're going to do the pass from left to right, which is the first, the first thing we do is draw the network. Then the next thing we do is a pass from left to right to do earliest start and earliest finish. So anything that comes out of the start node has an earliest start of zero. So that would be A, D, and G. And so we know for each of those the earliest start is zero. And then the earliest finish is just earliest start plus the duration. So we have three here. Zero plus two is two here. Zero plus 14 is 14 here. So then we go to, we continue to work left to right. So B has only A before it. So the earliest finish, or so the earliest start time for B is equal to three. The duration is three. So the earliest finish is six. We go to C, the earliest start is three. The duration is four, so the earliest finish is seven. So now we get to E, and E has two activities coming into it. D has an earliest finish of two, C has an earliest finish of seven, and E cannot start until both D and C are finished, so we take as we go from left to right, from left to right, we take the biggest earliest finish time. So we have an earliest start time for E because it can't start till both of those are finished. The earliest this will be finished is seven. Seven plus four is 11. And now again, we have F, which has both B and E coming into it. E has an earliest finish time of 11. B has an earliest finish time of six. So then we know the earliest start time for F is 11. The duration is five, which gives us uh, an earliest finish of 16. So now we have the left to right pass completed and we know that project duration is 16 days. 
because it the longest earliest finish time that goes into the no, uh, into the finish node is 16 this one's 14 so the the minimum project duration is the longest earliest finish time so that's 16 so the project duration is 16 days and and you'd be surprised how many students know exactly how to do this and then not how to interpret it so you will usually be asked to explicitly say what the project duration is now we're going to finish this with a pass from right to left and we do that by then doing we look at any activities that come out of the finish node or or come into the finish node pardon me and we pick the longest earliest finish time and that becomes the latest finish time so we have a 16 there and we have a 16 here this is where students often go wrong they'll often put a 14 here but you pick because that's one of the benefits of having the finish node you pick the uh, the longest earliest finish that goes into the finish node and put it as the latest finish because as, as the definition says the latest finish is the latest that that task can finish or that activity can finish without making the project longer so this could finish as late as 16 days without lengthening the project but if this took longer than 16 days it would lengthen the project so that's how we look at it then we take 16 minus the duration is 11 16 minus the duration is 2 now we go backwards here latest start time is 11 there are only one that goes into here uh, on our pass from right to left so we have an 11 here and a 7 here and we have an 11 here minus 3 is 8 and so the latest finish time again only one comes into C so we have a 7 here minus 4 is equal to 3 and we have a 7 here minus 2 is equal to 5 now when we get back to activity A on our pass from right to left we have a latest start time of 3 and a latest start time of 8 that come into this activity on our pass from right to left. In, when we went from left to right we picked the biggest number but now the latest this can start is 3 days without lengthening the project the latest this can start is 8 days without lengthening the project so the latest this can finish without lengthening the product project is the shortest latest start time that follows it so we have 3 here minus 3 is equal to 0 so now we filled in our entire project network in this relatively simple example and now we look for slack and, it, and slack is the difference between the earliest start and latest start or the difference between the earliest finish and the latest finished and and one way to check that you haven't made a mistake is those should be the same on both sides of your activity so we have two days of slack here we have zero five so we have five days of slack here Sixteen, sixteen, zero slack. Eleven, eleven, zero slack. Seven, seven, zero slack. And we'll check other side. Three, three, zero slack. Here we have eleven, six. We have five days of slack. If your earliest finish is ever bigger than your latest finish, you've made a mistake. You need to go back again. And so. Now we have 3300 zero, zero, and we have zero slack. So zero slack, zero slack, zero slack, and zero slack. So the critical path is the path is the longest path on the network and the one that has zero slack on it. So uh, this has five days of slack so our critical path then is 
A C E F. Oops, A C E F. That defines the critical path. This path isn't critical, so if B takes longer than three days, as much as five days longer, it will not become critical. Uh, this one has two days of slack, so if it becomes up to two days longer, we, uh, we, don't, have, uh, we don't have an issue. So, we've developed the network, we, we drew the network with our nodes, with the precedence relationships, then we worked from left to right on earliest start, earliest finish time, then we worked from right to left on latest finish, latest start time, we looked for slack, we identified the duration of the project, and then we, uh, uh, we determined the critical path. So those are the, the, the relatively straightforward steps in building the network and determining the critical path. You should be, it's worth doing a couple, of, uh, a couple of trials of that, but it should be relatively straightforward if you follow those simple steps. Thanks.